You need to know how many teams are competing, how many sections. Sometimes you have all the teams in, in, in the same big room if it's a smaller competition. Sometimes they are six different um, sections throughout the day with a few teams coming in during each one of those different time frames. So you need to know uh, exactly what the setup is going to be for your particular event that you're running. Um, and you have to have a complete set of materials for all of the teams. Now it takes it takes a lot of time to prepare a good event. If you struggle with the preparing of the event, hopefully I'm going to give you some resources as we go along here to help you develop the event if you're a little unsure about your depth of knowledge for the astronomy event. But it takes us a good two to three months to put together a good event for national competition. And that's with two of us, two or three of us working on it, uh, passing it back and forth, making sure that, that, it, that it fits the event description, that we don't overload on one part of stellar evolution to the detriment of another part of stellar evolution. We, we, it takes us a really long time. It takes a long time to determine which deep sky objects we're going to use because those deep sky objects are part of the process of stellar evolution. Every single one of them is in there because they are a stage of stellar evolution that leads to a type 1a supernova event. So it takes a lot of time to make them up. So you've got to have enough copies so that every team has one. Really make sure that there's no missing pages, that they're all in the exact same sequence, because bad things can happen if, it, if that happens too, where it, it's happened to me where uh, we had an event where one page did not get inserted into the event. Fortunately for us, it was an HR diagram. We drew it on the board and filled in the letters there, and it worked. So um, that was at an invitational, but that was no excuse. Uh, so bad things can happen even if you think you've prepared really, really well. So please make sure that every single test that you're handing out or set of materials you're handing out is identical with nothing missing. Have at least five additional copies of it for the helpers and for yourself to be ready when teams might have a question that they want to answer. And if you can find knowledgeable people, if you can find people who are astronomy students, uh, professors, whatever, someone who's taken astronomy, or, or maybe someone who was a former uh, astronomy event competitor in high school and did Science Olympiad. If they are knowledgeable, you should get together with them. Uh, some of them will probably be helping scoring. And the more they're familiar with the event, the better and more efficient and helpful they're going to be to you. So you should go over the event with your helpers, walk them through, show them the questions, give them an idea of the answers um, so that they are comfortable with, and if then they might be able to answer some of the questions. If not, then they would ask you if they were unsure. And they will certainly be way more helpful when it comes to scoring. So um, the when you start to organize your content to actually write the event, uh, put it together. You know, you've gone to the rules clarification to see if there's any questions or issues that any teams are having with the event description. You've studied the content. You've watched the webinar. You know what the content is. You know what the deep sky object is. You have the PowerPoint presentation with the links directly to websites that give you information about each of the deep sky objects. And again, make sure that you are focusing on the content and the topics within the event description. And make sure that these questions as you develop them are easy to score quickly and efficiently. You might have the last division of the day uh, section of time. You might That might be one of your time slots. And you've got to get everything, everything scored all the ties broken, everything to the event scoring people 
so that they can have time to collate all of that information to determine who is going to get a medal in all the events and the overall team winners. So that can be kind of scary at the end of the day, trying to get everything in. So make sure that your uh, questions are easy to grade, short answer questions. If there's more than one possible answer, make sure you have those written down on the answer key, uh, all possibilities. If you have numerical answers, make sure that you have the range of answers written down. So if it falls within that range, it's correct. Um, try not to give, if, you, if one answer has two questions, two or two, two parts to the, to the answer, then make sure that you give them the credit for the half that they got right and, and not for the half that they did not get. But make sure that every single correct response does get a score. Um, you can have short answer questions if they are not too subjective and have a really uh, efficient, perfect answer. Uh, just be careful that they don't get too long involved and that there are not more than students. Some of these teams will come in with answers to questions that y you think, oh, wow, I didn't think of that, but that's actually correct. But, you know, if, you, if you've gone through and said incorrect to some of those questions already, you can't start calling them to correct to other teams and they're all going to have to be scored the exact same way. At the national level, we each have our own section of questions and answers that we score because you cannot have different people scoring the same set of questions because they might decide that something is correct that you would think would be incorrect. So whatever section that one scorer corrects the first time, you have them correct that same section for every single team member. You never switch out. Now, um, remember that there are, there are image sets. You, can, you put together image sets, HR diagrams, variable uh, light curves for variability for some of the, of the uh, stages of stellar evolution. There is an awful lot of images and graphs and charts involved in astronomy, and all of those need to be there for as a base to ask the questions on with the deep sky objects. It's really, really important if it's an invitational or a regional that you are writing, then you want to focus entirely on the deep sky objects, the HR diagram, and just the process of stellar evolution. How the deep sky objects fit into the process of stellar evolution. That is what you want to focus on. You do not want need any of the higher level mathematics or two or three step problems. You can focus in on multi-step problems that use images and HR diagrams and light curves and ask a question where they have to look at all those three different types of images to come up with their answer, but you don't need any serious two and three step problem solving at that particular level. Uh, when you get to the state competition though, you need to add in those two and three step process questions. Astronomy is not a rote memorization event. I know a lot of teams, they see those deep sky objects you see what they bring for resources at, comp at competition, and you see that they have put together all kinds of images, and they're focused in on each individual image, but they still don't understand how it fits in the process of stellar evolution. They don't, they haven't, they haven't learned what stage comes next, or what's going to happen next, or what sequence that particular deep sky object is going to go through, where it fits into this scenario. They, they treat them like isolated things, and they've collated a lot of information about them, but they still don't understand the process. They do not understand, they've learned the HR diagram, they know the branches, but they don't understand that if you're on the main sequence, uh, and you, you, have an image of a red giant and you ask them where will this image, what, what will happen to this image on the HR diagram, where is it now and where will it be during its next stage of, of, 
of evolving, and they they don't make that connection that it's placed in different places on the HR diagram because of where it fits into the stellar evolution scenario. So they should not treat it as such. An another difficult thing to do is tie break. And I think I am the queen of all the ways to not do it. I made every tie breaking mistake you could possibly make and made it really difficult for myself at times in the very, very beginning when we were first uh, astronomy became an event. The, at nationals, we put every single question in tie-breaking order. So we never run out of tie-breakers, never ever. We go down through the list because if you have teams that are very, very close in their scores, you want to make really, really sure that the team that really has done the best job answering those questions is the first place team. If there's a large disparity in the scores, it's not going to make any changes in, your, in the placement of the team, then it wouldn't be as important. But you have to really, really be careful about the tie-breaking because you want the first place team to be the best team and the second place team to be the second best team. So tie-breaking every single question in tie-breaking order, you just keep going down. Okay, here's the first tie-breaking question. Which one of these three people got this one correct? And you just keep going down each question until you have sorted out every single one of those tests into a, 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 a sequence of first to last. Um, there is an annotated... Uh, sample te state test that was developed in 2015 that actually walks you through in the red. It, it's a sample test for, the, for 2015, so it was on exoplanets. But then you were walked through the entire event, that entire sample, with explanations in red, the ones here in red, explanation as to why those questions were asked. Why something from this section in the event, event description and something from this section in the event description was put together to ask this question that was about one of these deep sky, that involved one of these deep sky objects in that, in that list. It gives you an, an idea of how to think as you put together one of these events. Uh, it was very well done. We are probably going to come up with another one for, but I do not know if we'll have one for 2017 or not yet. But we are going to have resources for you that, that I'll show you in a second. So the 2015 uh, sample annotated is on the National Science Olympiad website under the event supervisor menu for you to download and use. It will give you an idea of how to write the event. Um, this is one of the, or two of the pages from this year's competition, uh, the 2016 astronomy event. Again, it was still uh, exoplanets. And these are samples. This shows you what the HR diagram in it looked like. It shows you what the images look like. It has some of the questions. Here's another page from that same event, this year's event, 2016, in Menominee, Wisconsin. Um, these are, you can get these, the, or you can get the entire astronomy event and answer key. It is part of the National Science Olympiad 2016 test packet, which is available on their website. You can purchase it for $18, and it's not just astronomy. If you've never purchased these event, these test packets before, they, they have all the events on them. This will give you the 2016 event for all 26 events from national competition. Uh, I don't. I, there might have been more, but there's 23 events on it, astronomy being one of them. So if you purchase that for uh, $18, you will be able to see the event and again, have an understanding of how the images and the questions go together.